Hello everyone, it's Mariner Fanatic back with another YouTube video, and in today's video, we're going to be doing the 60 game review for the Seattle Mariners. I'm just going to be going over a few things, and then also talking about the comparison with the 2020 Mariners a little bit, as well as 2021 Mariners, as there's quite a bit to unpack from this 2022 season so far. Jumping right into it, just a few things that we're leading the league in uh, that are not good is... Our pitching staff has given up the most home runs in the entire league. That may have shifted within the past couple days, but I know we're one or two up there close to the top. T-Mobile Park is not necessarily a hitter's park. It's not the pitcher's park it used to be about 10 years ago before they adjusted the fencing, but it's still not the biggest home run ballpark, especially with the weather not being quite as warm yet. Yeah, probably giving up a lot of home runs on the road, too, but either way, that needs to change. Pitchers need to be getting stuff in better locations and not missing as much, especially a guy like Robbie Ray. Speaking of Robbie Ray, has he figured it out? Last couple starts, pretty good. He made a couple adjustments. He added a two-seam kind of sinker uh, fastball that seems to have helped him out. His seven innings against the Red Sox was pretty impressive. Uh, the Red Sox are hot right now, and... A good lineup a lot of righties uh, so that was definitely an impressive start but he's going to need to build off of it so i think ray's on the right track and given his statistics i don't have a current stat on it but this was from a couple weeks ago stats in a worst inning of robbie ray's start he had pitched 11 innings and he had a 24 and a half era and 30 earned runs the rest of the game he had just about 55 innings with a one ERA and only six runs given up. So it's just very, very strange how he's been having just one bad inning. And there's not a whole lot of telling exactly what that is, whether it's just him not having enough pitches and him adding the two seam has really helped that out. And during the course of the game, hitters are just picking up something. Maybe he's tipping his pitches. I don't know. But for some reason to start the year, he was just having a lot of one bad inning per start. Now, like I said, this last start against the Red Sox, definitely very encouraging, and I think he's on the right track. Probably not Cy Young form again, but capable of reclaiming the ace role or being a solid number two to Gilbert. Back to another stat that we're leading the league in is leaving runners on base. This has probably gone up within the past few games, but we've left over 470 runners on base. That's just, it can't happen. Guys are walking. Our team as a whole is showing a lot more discipline at the plate than last year and previous years. We're getting hits. You know, Ty France batting over 300. JP's almost at 300. So there's guys that are hitting the ball, but we're just not doing it consistently enough and putting together innings, leaving too many guys on base. Just the other day, Taylor Trammell got on third base with nobody out, and we didn't score him. In the same game, first and second, nobody out, couldn't score him. So stuff like that and cannot keep happening. Another interesting stat I found on fan graphs is right now our base running rating is at negative five and a half. I'm not huge into the advanced metrics of base running, but when you see a glaring stat like that, it's clear that we're doing something wrong on the base paths. This was a few weeks ago, but Winker trying to stretch a double into a triple with nobody out to lead off the game. I think that was against the Mets. There's no reason for you to take third to start off the game. It's like an unwritten rule. You don't get thrown out at third base with nobody out. You're already putting yourself in scoring position by getting to second base. There's no reason to go to third. So there's probably other instances like that that I can't quite think of right now. But seeing that base running metric on fan graphs, it kind of makes sense to some of the things we've been seeing. And we really need to clean up the base running taking the extra base when it's necessary, and knowing when to shut it down. Too many guys are getting thrown out on the base pass this year. Next up, Kyle Lewis getting hit in the head, concussion. It's not good. I was at that game. I didn't think it was that bad at first. I thought he was going to be fine, and then it just wasn't, and now he's out again. And that's somebody we need in the lineup. Is Lewis's future in Seattle going to come to a close at some point? Probably not. He'll probably stick with the team, and I really hope for his success but are we going to see that long term? So that's an interesting one because we really need Lewis healthy in the lineup. Same thing with Mitch Hanniger. He's expected back about the first week of July. 
that's another guy we need back in this lineup hitting the baseball. Some of the lineups we've been putting out there the last few weeks have been brutal. Another issue we've been having is serious regression in the bullpen. Paul Seawald does not have his strikeout stuff like he did last year. He's still good, but he's not as elite as he was. Sergio Romo needs to be gone. Get him out of here. I love his personality, but he's just not it. He needs to get out of here. Steckenrider and Misevich both regressed, as I predicted. Never been fans of them. Luckily, they're not in the bullpen anymore, but either way, that's been a problem. Jerry did nothing for the bullpen in the offseason, and that was my biggest gripe and why I gave us an A- minus or a B B-plus for the offseason. He did nothing for the pen except for get Sergio Romo, and Romo's been our worst addition of the whole team. So that's a very frustrating point for me personally, um, and that's definitely been a weakness because the rotation over the last few weeks has steadied itself and been really solid. So right now, the pitching staff's issues lie with the bullpen. Guys like Penn Murphy are stepping up, but he's still young and he's had some moments where he's struggled. Castillo has bounced back, which is great to see. I like Castillo. Swanson still performing well is good to see. And overall, I think the bullpen can get back to form. I'd really like to see Giles back and healthy. Munoz, when he's on, is electric, but when he's not, he gets hit hard. There's some things in the bullpen to still get figured out, but I think that's something that can self-correct itself, and we can also make some moves uh, with trades, potentially, depending on where we're at when the trade deadline comes up. So, I should have mentioned this at the start of the video, but through 60 games, we were 27 and 33. The last four games, we are 1 and 3, and we're now 28 and 36. The start of this previous 30-game set was rough. We dropped to eight games under 500. Things were not looking good. And then we won four series in a row. Well, after these last two series, we are back to eight games under 500. But just to touch back on the 27-33 and 33 record that we had through these 60 games, that is the exact same record we had with the 2020 club that was far inferior to this club right now. And that is extremely frustrating. You look at all the offensive stats, and right now our team is top 10, top 15 in the league across the board. Maybe not necessarily in each category we're a top team, but as a whole, the team's offense is in a good spot. But like I said, we're leaving too many runners on base. Pitching is in the bottom half of the league. It's coming up. Uh, we were pretty close to the very bottom. It's starting to rise a little bit. But now recently, the pitching has been doing better than the hitting. And obviously, a lot of that has to do with Lewis and Hanniger being out. But my main point with this is it is frustrating that a team like ours has the same record as that 2020 team. That 2020 team had no expectations and was two games out of the playoffs. Obviously, 60-game season, you're going to be closer to a playoff spot. But right now, we are six and a half games out of the wild card. And that's just not good. Obviously, these 2021 numbers are going to be for the full season and not just so far. So there's a lot of time for that to change. But last year, we had an 8.71 clutch factor on fan graphs. Our team was extremely clutch. Kyle Thier was a big reason for that. 1.98 clutch factor. Hit with runners in scoring position consistently. Dylan Moore was second with a 1.72 clutch factor. JP 1.43. And then surprisingly, Torrens at 1.27. We were just a clutch team last year, and the next closest team to us last year was the Philadelphia Phillies with a 3.2 clutch factor. Huge gap. Obviously, the Mariners overperformed last year. Everybody knows that. But one of the reasons why we did was because we hit with runners in scoring position and were clutch. This year, we're not hitting with runners in scoring position, and we are not clutch. We have a negative 0.5 seven clutch rating it's probably changed within the past couple days since i looked it up surprisingly it's not as bad as i thought but the only reason for that is because toro has had a couple uh game tying hits his clutch factor is 0.67 uh which is hilarious because basically means that toro's only been hitting in clutch situations because he's been atrocious otherwise uh suarez anybody who says suarez is not clutch is an idiot 0.5 clutch factor. He's had a couple game tying hits, some lead taking home runs, stuff like that. And then Ty France, 0.37 clutch, and then Demo with 0.2 clutch. Obviously, it's 
earlier in the season, so those numbers go up and down. So we'll see what it's like at the end of the season. But so far, that is the biggest difference between the 2022 team and the 2021 team. We are not clutch at all right now, and we need to be hitting guys in because the offense of numbers don't look that bad until you look at the runners we've left on base. Overall, the last 30 games were up and down. We've got another 30 to go. I'll be having some more videos coming up towards the trade deadline with trade targets and stuff like that. We'll see if we're sellers or buyers. We might be both. But right now, we are not a good spot, and some things need to turn around for this team to still have a shot and make it to playoffs. So I hope you guys enjoyed that video, and I'll see you guys in the next one. Mariners Fanatic, out.